May the spirit of the living God Almighty give you ears to hear, wisdom and understanding, give you revelation knowledge to know the will of God, to learn of Christ Jesus that should be your hope for salvation. He should be your hope for spending forever with God Almighty. You want that, you, you're, it's a must to be saved from the wrath of God. It's a must to continue and be in the will of God. You must be born again. That is the will of God for anyone who comes to Christ. You must be born again. And so I want to talk about idolatry for those who are not born again. Um, I was meditating on the word of God as I do every day, as I ought to do every day, as any other truly born again Christian should be doing, meditating on the word day and night. And so that God blesses the Christian for doing so. But I want to talk about idolatry. And so the Lord, he, he calls people. He's calling everyone unto repentance from dead works, from the cares of this life. Repentance with the changing of the mind and heart. And turning towards God for salvation so he can perform a wonderful work on the inside. You want the stirring up of the inside of Christ Jesus through the Holy Ghost and to and the power to obey. The word of God talks about, and it gives glory to Christ in Hebrews chapter 1. It says he is the express image of his person. Whose person? The Father's person. The Father's the one who created all things. He is the express image of his person. He is the, um, the brightness of the Father's glory. He, is the, he, he upholds everything by the word of his power. So please understand that apart from Christ, anything that you call that is good is, does not please God. You can't please God without being truly born again no one gets into heaven no one spends forever with the father and the lord jesus christ no one gets into heaven without being truly born again that is the truth and that should bring some clarification of urgency for anyone who views this message who views this video and so i was meditating on the word of god uh, Psalms 135, I was reading, and I'm going to read it right now, starting in verse 3, it talks about, it says, praise the Lord, it gives, giving praise to God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good, sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant, so, being truly born again, being a, a, a creature in Christ Jesus, you have these desires, you, you have the joy of the Lord, you, the stirring of the inside, when it comes, especially when it comes to worshiping the Lord. You, you give praises to God in your mind. You, you praise God in your mind, in your heart. You praise God in your heart, in Christ Jesus. And you, 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 need the, you have the, the desire to please Him by obedience. And so, the heathen... Those who are not born again, those who are in the world, those who profess they know God, those who are in other religions and, and study other doctrines, they can't praise the Lord. But they can, but their heart is not truly converted. Their heart is a heart of stone, as it talks about that in Ezekiel. Their heart is a stone, but God wants your heart. To, to soften your heart, to change your heart, to be a heart of flesh, and to go after him. Go after him. It says, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for He it is pleasant. It pleases the Lord to, to praise him, especially when you're obeying him. 
Verse 4, for the Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure or his special treasure. We as Christians are God's special people, his peculiar people, his special people because we are, we are the children of the light. We are the children of the day. And it says, for I know the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods, all gods, lowercase g, O-D-S. So idolatry, you, there, there are many people who, and, I'm, and I want to also get into the gospel of Matthew towards when Jesus was on the cross crucified and what the hardness of heart, the, the heart of a heathen and how the heathen can be sealed in their condition. And to lean on your own understanding how that can seal you in a condition that rejects God. And when you continue having your heart as and seeking affirmation, loving the world and how, how that does that, that, that deception Loving the world and the things of the world, how that deceives you. And God sees you as a heathen. And so, I'm going to read that again. Verse 5 of Psalms 135. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. So, to seek the Lord with your whole heart, you got to confess because he knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your mind. He knows your secret thought life. You don't want to be caught dead in your sin, especially when Christ comes back. And that's what I meant. When you, you don't want to be caught dead in your sin when Christ comes back because he commands to be ready for the Son of Man is coming at the hour that no one expects, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. He commands with red letter words his authority, the Son of God says it. Jesus Christ says it. Be ready. Be prepared. Be ready when he comes. How can you get ready? You must be born again. And idolatry, 1 John talks about, I mean, as a matter of fact, it's the last verse in 1 John chapter 5. Keep a, ch little children, keep away from idols. Keep away from idols. Keep away from other gods. You're... Your wife can be your God. Your husband can be your God. Your, your finances can be your God. Your children can be your God. Your job can be your God. Everything else, your, your own, you can be your own God. And that is, that looks like arrogance and pride. And that's what was in Lucifer. Arrogance and pride. Pride is the, is the number one uh, sin which is abominable before the Lord that he hates. He hates all sin. We must hate all sin. And so in verse 6, it says, Whatsoever the Lord pleased that did he in heaven, or he did in heaven, and in earth, in the seas, in all the deep places. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. Now, notice something here. But before I get to the next verse, and I'm going to read this again. It says for in verse 5, uh, Psalm 135, For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord please that he did in heaven and in earth in the seas and all the deep places, meaning he, he created all things. All things was made for himself and by himself. He causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. Jeremiah said the same thing in Jeremiah chapter 51. Matter of fact, let me turn to it real fast. I'm going to come back to Psalm 130, 135. Jeremiah said the same exact scripture. He quoted it. And it's in chapter 51 of verse. Verse. 
16. And it says, when he utters his voice that is a multitude of waters in the heavens. This is describing the Lord's voice, the voice of many waters. And then he says, just like in Psalm 135, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings with rain and brings forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graving images. It's also talking about idolatry. For his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. No. Now, so there is no breath in them. It talks about the, uh, the, the idols in a person's life. Um. So uh, the Lord used the Lord, the spirit of the Lord was on Moses when he led the, the Hebrews out of captivity, out of Egypt with a mighty strong arm. And so the cultures of Egypt, the cultures of that society, they was accustomed to, but they was in slavery. They was in bondage. Their hearts so when they got delivered from Egypt and they, they crossed the Red Sea by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Lord, there, you know, Moses is introducing the, this new life presented by a blessing by God. But their hearts were still set on Egypt. Their hearts and their conditions, they wanted the things of Egypt. They wanted... Likewise, for modern day time, a, a person can get saved, but they want they they could revert back based on their desires. If they don't turn fully from the things of this world, they can revert back and desire to desire the things of the world, the, the desire the sports, entertainment, the desires the the love for money or the or the the drinking. The desires, the idols of this life. You could love a celebrity and that could be your God, your idol. God, the Lord says, have no other gods before me. And so in uh, verse 9, back to Psalm 135, it says, um, he's, now it talks about the Lord and his testimony when the Lord delivered the Hebrews out of Egypt. It's, he says, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast, who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of you, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants, who smote great nations and slew mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for the heritage and heritage unto Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever, and your memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will repent himself concerning his servants. Meaning he will change his mind concerning, concerning his servants, those who are faithful and obedient to the Lord. And so he, he blesses his, his people. He blesses the righteous. He hears the prayers of the righteous. And so... Idolatry is very seriously is very serious in in this life, and God hates it. He you, you serve the Lord with gladness, fear, and trembling. He is he should be number one priority. The, to to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. God will bless you because that's the first great commandment, and the second like such. To love your neighbors, you will love yourself. That God is love, so you should love. You know, and the love of God is if you're if you view this message and you are questionable about your life after after the your life in the afterlife, where are you going when you spend for, spend for uh, eternity at? You have to understand that. Um, there is a destination. There is a destination that you know not of. Oh, you may know in your heart, but you're too afraid to say it because you are not truly born again. 
um, the cares of this life is vanity. The cares of this life is vanity, meaning it is futile, meaning it's worthlessness except the path that leads to Christ Jesus. You need to commit to Jesus Christ so you can be saved. And so the Lord will judge his people and he will repent himself concerning his servants. And so I hear things like uh, what people of the world will say that uh, just pray about it or um, just pray to God and he'll make things right. Now, for the truly born again Christian, that is true. But for the unbeliever who just say, well, I prayed about it or I'm saved. Uh, that's not true because he does not hear sinners. He doesn't hear the those who continue in their sin, thinking that grace may abound. No, grace will not abound. Paul said that. Paul mentioned that. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. And you don't want to. You you don't want to die in a condition that rejects God, because God. In this life, can make your your he can make your life at great distress. If you worry about things, you can give up often to worry. If you worry about things, you're, you're, you're you don't trust God. That's clearly that's just plain as day. You don't trust God if you worry about things, because the Lord made it very clear in Matthew chapter six. He said, take no thought for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, neither for your body, what you will put on. Is it not the life more than meat and the body more than clothing? Then he says, behold the fowls of the air, meaning the birds of the air. Behold the birds of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more better than they? Then he says, which one of you, by taking thought, can add one, uh, can add one um, cubit to his stature? Meaning, what, what person, by worrying, can make one hair gray or can add an itch to his height? And he says, uh, and why do you take thought or worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feet. Oh, he says, consider the lilies of the field and how they grow for they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God, if God so clothed the grass of the field for today and tomorrow, it is cast into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Now, those who give off into worry and, and take thought of life and clothing, the, this is described as one who don't trust God. And they give their hearts to idols and trusting other things. That was the problem with the Hebrews um, of Egypt. The Hebrews and the uh, the children of Israel who, who were stubborn in their ways, who was stiff-necked, the word of God says, who was classified as heathen. They did not trust God nor Moses, but they wanted the pleasures of the things that they enjoyed when they was in Egypt. Likewise, for a person who professes to be Christian. And if they don't renounce the things that they used to enjoy that God despises, they're going to revert back. Many are called, few are chosen. The way to God in Christ Jesus is narrow. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life. Few that be that find it. Few that be that find it. Please understand, you cannot do nothing in this life to get into heaven. You can't do nothing without Christ Jesus. Jesus said that in John chapter 15. So, 
if you continue on in this life thinking, oh, just I'm going to just live a happy life, you are greatly deceived. There is consequences by just living to your own understanding. And if you don't give your life away to Christ Jesus, you will end up in hell. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. So your, your heart is set on idols. And again, from Matthew chapter 6, um, your heaven, it's, it, it's, it talks about your heavenly father knows what you have need of before you ask him. He knows your necessities. And so if you give your heart to things, to other resource sources, to life coaches, to uh, motivational speakers and uh, idols of this world for advice. You are receiving the counsels of the world. The word of God says, bless are those who, um, bless are the, how does it go? Psalms chapter one. You, if you receive counsel of the ungodly, then you, uh, you trust in other gods. You trust in the, uh, the ungodly. Bless is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So if you walk in the counsel of the ungodly and you notice things in your life is going haywire or you are in a troubling situation, but yet you keep continuing to go to other resources, go to ungodly people who are who who you just trust in their advice and rather not trust in the Lord, you're going to live a troubling lifestyle. You're not going to spend forever with God because you don't know when you're going to die. You are classified as a heathen. You are classified as a heathen. So the Lord in this Psalms describes the idols of this world. It says in verse 15 of Psalm 135, the idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusts in them. So, and it, you know, it's dangerous to trust and idols. Another psalm I, um, I remember is it says in uh, Psalms 118 and 8 better to put your trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So you put confidence in man and not the Lord. Um, men with their heart, with the deceitful heart, desperate above all things, desperately wicked, you can be deceived by believing. Especially if they're not born again. They trust in other resources. They trust in the devil and not even don't even know it. They don't know that they trust in the devil. Because in this world is tr uh, tribulation and, 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 and turmoil, tumultuous, tumultuous, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Lord? The tumultuous uh, devastation. You trust in the media. You receive information of the world. The world news. Why do you think it's called the world news? Why do you think that you trust in your own celebrity who is the world champion or the world champions? The world. The world loves its own. You don't understand that the world loves its own, you are greatly deceived. But I'm trying to tell you the truth. I come in here in truth. A lot of people get mad for telling for me telling the truth. But this is the word of God. You must understand if you die in unrighteousness, you will you will suffer from it. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusts in them. Then it says, you know, it gives, it gives praises to God in Psalms 135. Blessed 
the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. You that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. If you are truly born again and you obey Jesus, you you it, it, your lifestyle will show that you fear him out of reverence. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and instruction. So guess what the fools are? They hate, they despise wisdom and instruction. They don't want the way. They don't want the way that leads to life and life more abundantly. They don't want to cleave to Christ Jesus. They don't want things because men love darkness rather than because their deeds are evil. And that's what it's, that's what the, that's why the Pharisees hated Jesus. That's why the Pharisees hated Jesus, the Sadducees. They hated Jesus. They didn't believe in the resurrection. The scribes and the elders and chief priests, they preferred Barabbas over Jesus, even though it would not be the will of the Father to release Jesus Christ when Pontius Pilate attempted to let Jesus, Jesus Christ go. It would not be the will of the Father, but yet Christ took our punishment that we all rightly deserve. We deserve hell and the lake of fire. We deserve that because of sin and the, our sinful nature, our mindsets. But God is rich in mercy. He so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on Jesus Christ, his only begotten, will not die, will not perish, but have everlasting life. So I want to talk about the, the condition of the hearts of the Pharisees and the chief priests and elders, how they just, how deceived and how idolatrous they were to the traditions, the traditions of, of man. And Jesus confronted them. And how when you trust in the traditions of man or the or other resources or your your the one you love more than God, you will you will see how in the scriptures that your mind can be greatly deceived and blinded. Not all oh, I gotta go back to that. I gotta make this one point before I read this. I got to thank you, Holy Ghost. I got to make this one point. So back in Psalm 135, it says this. Back in Psalm 135. It says, okay. And I just read, the idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. So why do they have mouths and they speak not? Because... God does not hear their prayers because of sin. Because of sin. Eyes have they, but they see not. Why do they not see? Because their eyes are set on the pleasures of this life. You have the blind. You have blind leaders leading the blind. You have those who are in position or in some type of authority. And they speak lies and they try to lead and think they are speaking righteously, but they're lying. They're deceived. They're under the deception, under the sway of the wicked one. They lie and do not the truth. And so that's what Jesus said in John chapter 9. For judgment I have came into the world that they that see not might see, and they that see might be made blind. And so the Pharisees was like, are we blind also? If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. What was the sin that remained? Their conditions of their heart set on other set on the traditions of men. So they have eyes, but they see not. They trust in their idols. There was I doubt they trust in the world. The world loves their own and they love their own. But when the truth was available right in front of their eyes and they did not see that this is the Christ, this is the Son of God, the only begotten Son, the one who was prophesied in the scriptures and they thought they understood the scriptures, they searched the scriptures and think they may have eternal life 
and they clearly didn't because they were blind leaders. They, they did not see. They could not see. The one dude who got healed by Jesus rebuked them and said that now we know that God does not hear sinners, but he who is a worshiper of God and does his will, him he hears. Does God hear your prayers? That's my question. Does God hear your prayers? And if you think so, how do you know that he hears your prayers? How do you know that your prayers, your prayers avails much? The prayers of the righteous avails much. So they have ears, but they hear not. Why they ears? Why do they have ears and hear not? Because they don't they don't hear not the truth. So the truth can resonate and set manifestations of God's goodness in the mind and heart and then they can be converted they have ears but they hear not neither is any breath in their mouths so there are dead men walking that's what they're they're um they're like whited wash walls they're 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 uh Jesus described this in Matthew 24 I believe um they're like whited sepulchers, whited tombstones. They are dead men's bones. And people in this world, they are like the walking dead because they have no life in them, meaning everlasting life, life eternal. They don't want Christ. They hate Christ based on their actions. How can you say that, Brother Joseph? Well, your actions prove it. Your actions, your lifestyle the way you conduct yourself proves that you hate God and Christ Jesus is only begotten. Your lifestyle rejects Jesus. So I'm clearly trying to present to you the truth of Jesus Christ. Let's see how the Pharisees, let's see how the Pharisees and how deceived they were when Christ was on the cross. He, in verse 33 of Matthew 27, it says, and when they were come into a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink Jesus. Jesus did not drink. He didn't, would not drink it. And they crucified him, parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them. What prophet? The prophet Isaiah. And upon my vexture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched there. So they 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 gambled his, with it with Christ's garments, his his apparel. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written: This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. And guess what they said? This is what they said as based on their pride and mockery because there was they are under the sway of the wicked. They are heathens before a holy God viewing the only begotten son of God, Jesus Christ, viewing him on the cross and his disciples barely recognized Christ Jesus or recognize his disciples. They barely recognized him because of how mauled he was. He was bruised, wounded for and 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 so he was bloody. He was beaten. He had a platted. He was platted with a crown of thorns and nailed on a cross. And this is what they said about him. You destroyed, and this is the lie. This is a deception. This is why idolatry is dangerous because you trust in your own understanding. So you think what God is saying is to your own understanding, and you end up lying by saying this. You that destroyed the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you be the son of God, come down from the cross. The devil would say the same thing, but the, and the devil, they're, they're, which is their father, you know, they're under the sway of the wicked one. They, their pride and their arrogance caused them to blaspheme Jesus Christ. 
blasphemed the Son of God. If you be the Son of God, come come down, you that destroyed the temple and build it in three days. They had no clue that Jesus Christ was talking about his body and it's right in front of them, right in front of them, right in front of them. He is right in front of them. And then verse 39, and they that passed by reviled him. And I already read that. Verse 41, likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said he saved others himself. He cannot say they didn't believe in him. They didn't believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. If he be the king of Israel, let him come, let him now come down from the cross, and he will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Jesus Christ did not tell them he is the Son of God. He always used the Son of Man. Because he even said that when he was arrested and he was. He told them in, prof in prophetic terms, you will see the Son of Man coming in clouds and great power and glory with his holy angels. He said the Son of Man. He did not say the Son of God. So they, and even when he says before Abraham was, I am, they, they, they took it as he's comparing himself with the Father, but he clearly told them, my Father and I are one. And they did, and he clearly told them that you believe not in the Son. You don't you hate the Son, therefore you hate the Father also. They said he trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour. Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama stabashtani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, in more of a deception that they trusted in the traditions of man, they did not believe that the Son of God, Jesus, they did not believe that he is the Son of God. They did not believe in his, in his they did not believe in him. They hated him. Without a cause, they thought that he was calling on Elijah. That's what happens when you trust in the idols of this world and the traditions of men and the cares of this life. You believe not the truth. You think the truth says one thing and it clearly is, it is deceiving you. The truth can deceive you. But if you believe fully with your whole heart in God's, in the truth that God is, your life and the length of your days and that he sent his only begotten son into the world so you can commit and be converted then the truth will save you the truth will save you some of them that stood there when they heard that said this man calls on elias or elijah and straightway meaning immediately one of them ran and took his a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reading gave him to drink and so like moving forward when jesus christ gave up the ghost it, it, it says the 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 veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom the rock split apart the earthquake and he went into the belly of the earth so while he was in the belly of the earth the deception of the pharisees what happens when you don't believe, when you don't trust in God, that you say you know God, but in works deny him. And you, you're you thinking that you are saved and truly you're not. You're going to begin to hate. You're going to believe to say things crazy. Like to the like how the Pharisees said, remember that deceiver while he was yet alive. After three days, I will rise again. They they call him a deceiver. They call the Son of God, Jesus Christ, a deceiver. And they deceived themselves because the devil had them deceived. Their own trusting in their heart, the deceitful heart, had them deceived. Command, therefore, that. Now, here is the commandment uh, that they said out of their misunderstanding and their lack of knowing the truth and their blindness. 
They said in verse 64, command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first. So Pilate said to them, you have watch, go your way, make it sure as you can. They don't, they didn't trust in the Lord. They didn't, even when he died, it went into the belly of the earth. They they called him a deceiver. They, they didn't believe on him. They didn't, but something was telling them that this was going to happen. Something was telling them that what he is saying is true, but they chose not to believe until it manifested, until Christ rose on the third day. Pilate says to them, you have watch, meaning you have guards. Go your way, make it sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher, meaning the tombstone, sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Now in chapter 28 of Matthew, now when Christ rose again, where is it, Lord? In verse 7, now after he rose again, they, <laughs> the, the, the ones who guarded the, the stone, I'm going to start. I'm going to read verse 2. It says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance, his countenance, meaning his appearance, was like lightning, and his raiment or his clothing white like snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men because they, they didn't, they was. And great, they was terrified. They was trembling at this angel. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, because of Mary Magdalene came in and uh, looked, and the other Mary, uh, saying, "He is not here, for he is risen, as he as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you." And so, now I'm, gonna, I'm trying to find the the verse where they try to they try to lie. Oh yeah, here it is, verse eleven. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch, some of the guards came to the city and showed to the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders, meaning they gathered with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, "Say his." Now they they, they commanded the soldiers that the the watch or the guards. Uh, to lie more, you see how the devil deceives. They gave him some. They gave them some money, and telling them, say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if they come, and this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure to and secure you. Meaning they gonna lie to him too. They're gonna be. They're liars. Lying lips is an abomination to the Lord. I mean, have they have they not read the scriptures? Because that's what it says. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. A false witness is an abomination to the Lord. And so they took the money and they, as they were taught, and this saying is calmly reported among the Jews until this day. So they they continue on not believing, and Jesus was risen again. And then he sent the Holy Ghost to the disciples. Jesus rose again. He ascended back into heaven. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. So what does that have to do with idolatry? Well, this is clearly you don't you, you, you stay away from idols. You stay away from other guys, other resources that can lead you astray. When I say resources, I'm talking about the life coaches, the ungodly advices, the ungodly counsels, and the trusting in man rather than God. You trust in Christ Jesus. You trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord in all your ways, and he will direct your path. When you trust in God, he will build you up and, and by, by you obeying that he is Lord, by you obeying his instructions, his statutes, his precepts, his laws, 
the you have the law of God. I'm not talking about the ten, the ten commandments. No man can keep the the ten commandments, but Christ Jesus, who was perfect, he 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 kept the law perfectly. Jesus Christ, he said that in John chapter 15. As the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Continue with my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So, Jesus Christ, who was perfect in thought, word, and deed, in human form, obeyed perfectly because he is perfect and he is the example on whom we will follow because he commanded to be perfect for my father in heaven is perfect. And the excuse of no man is perfect, that's a lie. Jesus Christ is perfect. And God is perfect. God is good. In him there is no darkness. There is no deception, no lying. He is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. You can find it in, in the, the book of Nahum, chapter 1. That's what it says. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Lean not to your own understanding. So, what are you going to do now that you know that you don't know where you're going to go after you die? And if you die as unrighteous, as not being born again, you can end up in hell. Will you commit to Jesus Christ? Will you give your life away to Christ Jesus so you can be saved from the wrath of God for himself and by himself so you can spend forever with him? You want you you need to want that. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life. Few that be that find it. Will you be a part of the few that finds it so you can be a new creature? And new creatures live a different way. We are, we are called creatures. We, us as human beings, the Lord calls us creatures. We are creatures. If you read Ezekiel, it describes the many different uh, faces of his creation. Then one had a face of an eagle. The other a face of a, uh, of a, I believe it's a bird. I gotta go back and revisit. But you are a creature. You are. Supposed to be made new by Christ Jesus by conversion. The, the evidence of conversion is your belief in Christ Jesus so he can change you from the inside out. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have been passed away. Behold, all things become new. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. This is for his glory.